Hi, today I thought I'd show you how we can add tooltips to our interface for the various controls that we have on our UI. So there are two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the sort of built-in default way, and then I'm going to show you a way where we can create custom tooltips. So let's add some controls. We'll add a knob and we'll add a button. And both of these controls have a tooltip property. See tooltip up there. So we can type in some text, we can say this is a button. And for the knob, we'll say this is a knob. So those are the tooltip properties set for these two controls. Next, we'll add a floating tile. And we'll change the content type to tooltip. When I can find it, a tooltip panel, that's the one. Now we'll just stretch that out a bit. So we'll put that down there somewhere. And I'll hit compile and I'll turn off the edit thing. And now when I hover my mouse over, you can see it says this is a knob, this is a button. And if I hover it over various controls on the Highs UI as well, it also shows the tooltips there because Highs uses the same system for displaying its tooltips. You might notice that the info icon is kind of obscuring the writing a bit, obscuring the tooltip. Uh, we don't really have much we can do about that. We can change the font size of our tooltip panel. We can change the font. The only real thing you can do to kind of change that is sort of move things around. So that's a little better if we resize things. So there we go. So, so now it's no longer sitting over the top, but the icon stretches. So the bigger you make this panel, the more the icon is going to be an issue. Um, one other thing you can do is you can change the text color and we can also change the background color. So that's, that's really about the limit of customization we have with the built-in tooltip uh, floating tile. And you'll probably never use this floating tile because of this limitation, unless you just want something really basic. So now I'm going to show you how we can make a custom tooltip uh, panel and it's not going to use this floating tile, so I'm going to delete that. And we are actually going to use a panel control, so I'll add a panel here. And with this, we're going to be able to make it look however we want. We can add icons, we can just draw text, we can do anything. So let's just uh, rename this panel to PNL Tooltip. And the way this works is as a function that gives us the tooltip of the control that the mouse is currently over. And that function um, is called content.getCurrentTooltip. But it's no good for us to use it just in on init like this because then it's only going to happen when you first hit compile and that's not very good. We need it to happen when the user's moving their mouse around. Now there's no callback for the mouse uh, just hovering over any control on the interface and there's no callback to trigger the tooltip function. So what we have to use is a timer. So the timer runs and we say every 100 milliseconds, check if there's a tooltip, and if there is, we display it. So we're going to use a timer and we're going to use a panel timer and we're going to use our tooltip panel for this. So what I like to do is I like to make a namespace to keep all this code sort of contained. So we'll call it namespace tooltip. And then within here, we're going to have our panel and then we're going to set the panel's paint routine. And we're also going to set the panel's timer callback. And we're going to start the panel's timer. And the timer is going to run from the moment of initialization until you close your plugin. So it's just a permanently running timer in the background that's going to check if there's any tooltips to display. And you can put whatever duration you want in here. 100 milliseconds is probably fine. If you don't want it to update that often, 250 maybe. We can experiment with this and see what works best. There's probably no point going faster than 100 milliseconds. Okay, and let's do the timer callback first. So all we're going to do in the timer callback is trigger the paint routine. So we just call this dot repaint. So this paint routine is now being triggered every 250 milliseconds. We can see that if I just put a console print here. I hit F5 
and we can see it's printing out hello world every 250 milliseconds. So now in here we're going to get the current tooltip using that function we looked at. We'll call it T. And now we'll print this to the console. So you can see it's just printing nothing because the mouse isn't hovering over a control, but if I hover it over our knob control, it's printing this is a knob. If I hover it over the button, this is a button. And you can sort of see how fast it's updating as well. So now our tooltips are being displayed just in the console for now. So now we want to get these to display on our panel instead. So we can set our panel's text color. Let's do that over here. So text color, we'll just have it set to white. So we'll go g.setColor this.get text color. And then we'll draw the text g dot draw align text and the text string that's just going to be our t variable which contains a tooltip the area is going to be the full area of the panel so x y 0 0 and then the width this dot get width and this dot get height and then the alignment uh, we can do this uh, left right or centered we'll have it aligned to the left for now and I'll hit F5 on that. And now if I hover my mouse over, we can see the tooltip appears in our panel. But the panel's actually invisible at the moment, so why don't we have it so the panel appears when there's a tooltip and then it disappears when there is no tooltip. So for that we'll set a background color for our tooltip panel. Let's just set it to black. And in our function here, we'll, uh, we'll check if there's a tooltip. And if there isn't a tooltip, we're going to make the panel transparent. And if there is a tooltip, we're going to use the background color, but maybe we'll add some alpha to that so it's not fully opaque. So we could do this with an if statement, but I think we'll use the ternary operator here. So we'll say t equals empty, g.setColor. We'll just put that so that's 100% transparent, completely invisible. And otherwise, we're going to do g.setColor colors with alpha, this.get bg color, and then for the alpha, we'll put something like 0.5. And then we'll put here g.fill rounded rectangle, and for the area, we'll do the full area again. And we'll just give it a rounding of five on the corners there. Okay, so now when I hover my mouse over, the panel should appear with our writing on it. And yeah, that works. Something else we could do. Let's add a bit more alpha to this, actually. Let's try. There we go. A bit more transparency. And the, the text is like right up against the edge of the panel, so let's shift it in a bit. So all we have to do is change the X position here for the text. So let's set that to 25. There we go. To make this a bit more like the built-in tooltip panel, we'll also add an info icon. So I'm going to do this using an SVG path that I've converted. I have videos showing how to do that. Um, so we're going to create a variable here called SVG data. And then I'm just going to paste in the data points I've already converted for this um, icon. So there we go. And I'll just indent that a bit so it's a bit neater. So these are the SVG data points. I think these are from the Bootstrap icon set, which you can find online. And if you're on Patreon, of course, I'll make this snippet available so you'll have this uh, to work from anywhere. And then we'll create the icon. So we'll just call it in info icon content dot create path and then we go info icon dot load I think it's load from data and then we pass the SVG data array that we've already declared. 
Okay, so now we've got an icon and it's saved in this info icon variable and we can draw it wherever we want. So we're going to draw it into our panel here. And first of all, we need to set the color. So actually we'll just go with the text color that we've already got. So we'll, so we'll write here g.fillpath and then we have to give it the path, which is our info icon. And then again, we have to give it the area. So that this will be X, Y, width and height. Well, the height is going to be the height of our panel. So it's going to scale with the panel. And since we want this to be a perfect circle for the info icon, we'll make the width also the height. So both the width and height are the same. The X position, let's put it sort of five in and we'll do zero for the Y. Um, we'll probably want to increase this value here so our text is pushed in a bit more. So for now I'll put that to 50. Let's see how that looks. And it looks like I've used the wrong info icon because this is just the eye. I wanted to use a circle info icon. So I'm just going to replace the contents of this data array with the correct path. There we go. That's the one I wanted to use. There. So now we've got this nice circle icon here, and if I hover the mouse over, it should draw the text. So the problem we've got now is the info icon is being displayed all the time. So we just need to make it so that only shows when there's actually a tooltip, just like everything else. Uh, there are a few ways we could do this, but I think the simplest way is to just put an if statement here and say if t does not equal an empty string, then draw the info icon. So there we go. We could extend this if statement so it also includes the text, although the text won't appear anyway if there isn't any text because it'll be an empty string, but just for sort of completeness we'll have it all wrapped neatly in this if statement. So I hope you found this useful. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. If you're one of my Patreon supporters, I'll be posting this snippet for the higher tier supporters and you'll get access to everything that's here, including this SVG data path. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.